We're going to begin by talking about the logic of arguments. Now, why do we need to talk about arguments? Well, analyzing arguments is the core of what we do in philosophy. And it's also a skill that's going to serve you greatly in whatever field you go into in life. Now, what is an argument? In the first place, arguments are composed of statements. A statement is a sentence with a truth value. That is, it's a sentence which can be either true or false. Not every sentence can be true or false. Uh, so, for example, if I ask you a question, if I ask, is the cat on the mat? Well, the question itself isn't true or false. It can't be true that is the cat on the mat. It might have a true or false answer but the question itself doesn't have a truth value therefore it's not a statement and therefore it's not going to be part of an argument if i say the cat is on the mat well that's either true if the cat is on the mat or false if the cat has wandered off somewhere so whether it's true or false it's got a truth value and therefore it's a statement and could be the premise or conclusion of an argument other kinds of sentences without truth values include commands like look at that cat that's not true or false or just an exclamation like cats or young cats those are neither true nor false therefore they're not statements and they're not part of an argument now an argument is a group of statements in which one or more statements the premises are supposed to provide supporting evidence for another statement which we call the conclusion. So for example, here's one argument. All men are mortal. Socrates is a man. Therefore, Socrates is mortal. The first two statements are premises and the conclusion uh, is signaled by therefore. The, and the premises give support to the conclusion. Here's another kind of argument. All the swans that I've ever seen have been white. Therefore, all swans are white. Now, in this case, the premise, there's just one premise which supports the conclusion. And we'll look at both these kinds of arguments uh, later on. Logic is the discipline that studies and evaluates the inferential relations between the premises and conclusion of an argument. Now, by inferential relations, I mean whether or not the premises really support the conclusion. Logic is what studies how much your premises really support your conclusion. Logic is not the same thing as persuasion or rhetoric. Persuasion has to do with what arguments people actually accept. Logic has to do with the arguments that they ought to accept. Okay. Unfortunately, people are often irrational and logical arguments do not persuade them and illogical arguments do persuade them. We don't care about people's psychology in this class. We don't care about what actually persuades them. That's for advertisers and marketers to figure out. We care about what ought to persuade people. We want to distinguish arguments from explanations. They, they can often look very similar, but we're interested in, in arguments. So arguments give evidence in support of the truth of some claim. Explanations make sense of how or why some claim is true. So uh, to put it another, another way, arguments address if the claim is true, explanations are gonna address why the claim is true. Let me give you a couple examples. If I say your sink is leaking because there's a hole in the trap, well, we both know that your sink is leaking. Okay, we don't need proof that your sink is leaking. When I say because there is a hole in the trap, I'm telling you why this commonly accepted fact is the case. There's this hole. That's where the leak comes from. That's an explanation. But look at this other very similar sentence. I believe your sink is leaking because there's a puddle of water underneath it. Now, in that case, uh, the fact that your sink is leaking is not something that we is, is commonly agreed upon. I'm trying to prove it to you, and I'm trying to prove it to you by presenting you evidence, indications that, in fact, your sink is leaking. Why do I think that? How do I know that? Because there's a puddle of water underneath it. Now, I haven't tried to explain why your sink is leaking. That's a different story, but I'm trying to convince you that it is leaking. Now, how are you going to tell the difference between arguments and explanations? Well, you're going to look at a, 
uh, these sorts of claims contextually and figure out what's being presented here, evidence or, or kind of a cause. Logically correct deductive arguments are called valid. Now, deductive arguments are not the only kind of arguments that there are. We're going to talk about inductive arguments later on. But for now, right now, the next couple of lessons, we're only talking about deductive arguments. And when a logically correct, uh, when a deductive argument is logically correct, it's valid. Here's the definition of validity, and you must know this. If an argument is valid, then the conclusion must be true if the premises are true. Here's another way to say the same thing. It is impossible for the premises to be true and the conclusion to be false if you've got a valid argument. In a valid argument, it's impossible for the premises to be true and for the conclusion to be false. Now, validity, I'll give you some examples in a second. Validity, in this sense, is a property of arguments, not of single statements. Um, it's neither valid nor invalid if I say the sky is blue. Why? Because there's no argument there. But if I say um, uh, all skies, are, if I were to say all men are mortal, Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is mortal, that's a group of statements and in which one is supported by the others. And that can be either valid or invalid, but single statements can't be. Single statements can be true or false. That's what they are. They all are. Arguments can't be true or false because arguments aren't single statements. They're groups of statements. So all men are mortal. Socrates is a man. Therefore, Socrates is mortal. That's neither true nor false. It's valid or invalid, but not true or false. Keep that straight. Validity, by the way, doesn't come in degrees. It's all or nothing. Um, you can't say that an argument is mostly valid or sort of valid. I mean, students do say that all the time, but they're wrong. It's all or nothing. Validity, and this is so important, validity is independent of the truth of the premises or the conclusion. It has nothing to do with whether the premises or even the conclusion are true or false. So look at example one here. If I say all men are mortal, that's true. Sasser is a man, true. It follows from those two premises that Sasser is mortal. And that also happens to be true. I'm going to die. So this argument is valid and all the premises and conclusion happen to be true. But they don't have to be. Look at example two here. This is also just as valid. All unicorns eat pixie dust. That's false. Sasser is a unicorn, also false except in the metaphorical sense. Therefore, Sasser eats pixie dust. That is false. But guess what? That argument is as valid as the day is long. Because if the premises were true, the conclusion would have to be true. Just like in the first example. Now here's another example. Look at three here, where everything's true, but the argument is not valid. So Greenville is in South Carolina. Dogs are mammals. Therefore, Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. All true, but guess what? The premises don't provide any logical support for the conclusion. Here's the test. If you want to ask yourself, is this argument valid or not? Ask, can you conceive of a world in which the premises are true, but the conclusion is false? If you can, that's an invalid argument. If you can't, it is valid. So look at example three. Can you conceive of a world in which Greenville is in South Carolina and dogs are mammals, and yet Lincoln was not assassinated but lived to a ripe old age? Well, yeah, I can, that's totally conceivable. You can imagine all those things being, the, 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 for the premises being true, but the conclusion being false. That's why that's not a valid argument. The conclusion doesn't necessarily follow from those premises. All right. In addition to validity, we also want to ask ourselves whether an argument is sound, whether it is sound. Now, what does it mean for a deductive argument to be sound? Well, if an argument is logically valid and 
all of its premises are true, then that argument is sound. And in that case, the conclusion must be true. So validity is necessary but not sufficient for soundness. Soundness is the gold standard. If you have a sound argument, you've won your point. Uh, the conclusion must be true. Now, sometimes you're going to have a case where you know that the argument is logically valid, but you're not sure whether the premises are all true. So take this one for example. If the next winning lottery number ends in 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9, then the next winning lottery number will be an odd number. Now that's true by definition. Premise 2. The next winning lottery number ends in 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9. Now nobody knows whether that's true or false. It's a 50-50 chance. The conclusion that's drawn from those two premises though is that therefore the next winning lottery number will be an odd number. Now that is a valid argument. If the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. But we don't know whether P2 is true or not. So this argument may be sound, but we just can't tell. Now that brings us to the four possible evaluations, the four possible assessments that we may give of a deductive argument. So we find a deductive argument, we evaluate it for validity and soundness, here are the possible conclusions we might draw. You might say, hey, guess what? This argument is logically valid and all the premises are true, therefore it is sound, gold standard, A+. You might have an argument that is logically valid, but it's definitely not sound. One or more of the premises is false. Okay, you lose. Good try, but you lose. Um, you might have an argument like that last one, which is logically valid and possibly sound, but we just can't tell whether one or more of the premises is true or false. So, not sure. Question mark there. And then you might have an argument which is not valid. And if it's not valid, it is not sound by definition. No matter whether the premises are true, false, or whatever, if it's not valid, it's not sound. And so, definitely... Uh, this argument loses. So these are the four possible ways that you might assess arguments and we will be assessing tons of arguments all throughout the semester.